Oh. Welcome everybody. Uh, regular meeting. Recording in progress. Regular meeting of council for April the 16th, 2024. Resolve the agenda for the April 16th, 2024. Regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Resolved the minutes of the April the 2nd, 2024 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Four, 4, 4.1. Resolved <clears throat> resolve that this regular meeting be closed and the public hearings hearing on Variance Order 1, 2024, be opened. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. All in favor? <coughs> Carry. Okay. So this is on the lot. down to three feet. So in, in your packages, <clears throat> in supporting documents, uh, there's reasoning, so a letter <coughs> from the applicants, and then the public lane uh, project, or sorry, uh, drawing is a little it's the easiest to use the one that uses google maps is a little uh confusing but if you see the the middle map the first one that you go down to you'll see the 50 by 100 foot building and call it the left side of the drawing you see the three foot variance so that what's required is 10 feet that's where they want it cut down to three feet Okay. Councilor Medwood. Is there anything in our zoning or variance bylaws giving reason why we should not reduce oh. the <clears throat> variance? It's more just the look of uh, the commercial highway, that they're a bit more spaced out. They're not right up against property lines. Uh, but in this case, they've already talked to the landowner on the other side. So I couldn't say for a zoning reason that it should be denied. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bobbitt? There's no easement in between those two buildings, right? Is there for a back alley or anything? No. Go ahead, you're on. I uh, just wonder, the pitch of your roof, I imagine, is going to be north and south, right? East and west. Oh, no, north and south. Yeah, north south. Yeah, I just, uh, just the one concern I might have is, the water off your roof has got three feet to contend with unless it goes on to the other property. So I'm just splitting hairs here and saying, would you be interested in five feet? Just that that would give you the availability to put some kind of small drainage ditch out of there. And if, if you happen to have new neighbors in the future or something and your water was off your roof was causing them havoc, it might be something to entertain. You know what I mean? Three feet, you don't have much room to do anything. I understand the 10 feet that you're talking about, but three feet is very tight. So. No water is definitely, it's a problem if you don't have eaves trough essentially yeah. taken out of the way. I think the eaves should be suited to move that much water. Okay. It's a 50 foot roof, 100 feet long, a deep commercial trough should, should get us that, but at the same time, I mean, uh, we're just hoping to not waste the space essentially the, exactly. the neighbor signs on yeah. part in there so it's like okay thank you i should have done this but i should ask you both maybe to come and sit up at the front because i'm going to ask you to yep. speak as well later on uh 
Well, I was just actually noticing that um, the old Cox is building on the north side, so that would be First Street. It literally is running a lake right across the sidewalk because their building butts up against the sidewalk. So I'm pretty sure if they plan their east tromping and soffit fascia to account for their neighbors and have it exiting in an appropriate way when they do the building, that would probably also take care of care of that. Okay, anything further? Uh, Deputy Memorial and then Councilor Bob. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Mahan, I just kind of see, um, I guess it, it currently it's, it's a vacant lot and I understand there's a, from your literature that you've probably had some conversations with a potential owner um, and I don't, I'm not aware um, and maybe administrations of some type of site development plan of what they're looking to do with their building but from what you're proposing here is that they've indicated that they're going to put their parking on the north side like that's similar a, to your drawing yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah okay um so um is it potentially with concern if, if they move it the other way if it's not in concrete um like in stone of how they want and they could move their building even closer that might potent move some potential uh might you i would say we can't they got 10 they would have to ask for a variance at that point too um and i could deal with that i'm just thinking that it, right now it looks good with the parking on their north side lots yeah. of room between buildings especially when you're looking from a fire service like emergency service perspective but a fire jump from building to building uh, with that and that's traditionally why you have the, the spread yeah um with that so but as with council bob it considering like with the three feet uh, the concern is that you have the leaf drop but um what about like if they have parking here and you had mentioned that they would be able to drive with their parking up to the their north boundary, which would be your south boundary, um, and then probably extend over that property line a bit. Um, any concerns about the uh, like a snow load, like sliding snow in the spring coming off that and potentially falling on their, those vehicles? That would be their problem, but at the same time, um, I don't really think that's an issue if it's three feet back. Every <coughs> now has those stops to hold your own snow load because you're not supposed to put your snow on the neighbor's yard for the exact drainage issues and things like that. So I don't see that being a problem. And uh, the fire rating has to increase in that wall quite a bit to be moved closer to that line. Mm -hmm. So as far as a fire, if, if a car started on fire by accident, we don't want our building to catch on fire and vice versa. So the firewall is increased. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe just my concern is like snow sliding off that route going on to their mm -hmm. lot. Um, like if they're parking their hood of their cars right up to their lot line as parking, and um, as we, snow is going to slide off because you your buildings are going up to three feet, right? Or is that the eave that's going up to your three feet? The eave is eave. three foot three. Right. So your building wall is going to be set back. Yes. So it'll be like six, six. foot something. Six foot three, and then you're gonna your <coughs> eave is gonna be up to three feet. From yeah, the it's a smaller eave, but okay. yeah. So, okay, so as, as, as long as you're aware of those potential risks that of snow snow flies off or slides off, that uh, yeah, that'll decrease that where you got the shoot path of it that it may shoot right onto some parked cars there if you don't have those snow blocks or they. <laughs> not, so. okay. Yeah, it's definitely it's a very low slope. It's a one twelve. Okay. Um, it should have the snow stops, but it is yeah. something for sure that yeah. everybody needs to be aware, aware of. Yeah. Okay. After yeah. the first year, then I guess you'll be able to decide if you really want to park that much closer or not. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just trying to keep it, keep it more beautified by not mm -hmm. having like a. And then I said your parking is going to be on the north side, also of your building. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. Eventually, we'd like the variance because we'd like to develop as much of that property as possible. So this is phase one, phase two to come. Okay, thank you. Councilor Bobby. So I would imagine this is a, a slab with a thicket edge, right? Yeah. That you'll be designing. So I would be thinking that you'll be going two feet down and two feet out with insulation on the other yep. side of that building. So yep. just wondering if there's any infrastructure that would affect that, you know, coming through there. Uh, Telephone lines, Westman, stuff like that. Does that come through the property lines, or does that all come from the front? Like, from that lane. 
Okay. Just to Harvey. The water and sewer come from the front, and typically the natural gas and all the other ones come from the rear. Or from the rear. So they would make, there's no need for that to go on the side of that building. <coughs> Uh, they would usually just go, they might go to one side or the other right at the back of the building and then in, or they might go right to the back of the building yes. and then the water and sewer would come in from the front. So there would be sufficient, let's say somehow the natural gas that goes in the middle of that building, there would be sufficient to bury that gas outside the two feet of the styrofoam or the insulation. That should be. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> anything further? Okay, your time to shine. Do you have anything further? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Basically, it's just uh, we want to use this space as efficiently as possible. And it just seemed like there's going to be this 10 foot void between parked cars and our building. And just aesthetically, it just all I can see is grass to cut or weeds to pull or some problem. So we just thought if we spoke to the other property owners in the area and said, do you see any reason that we should not pursue this? And everybody agreed that it kind of made sense to them, but obviously we're not planning committees. But uh, from a business perspective and aesthetics, it seemed to be the right call. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> All right, 4.2, resolved in the public hearing, be adjourned and the regular meeting be reopened. Moved by Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. So if you want, you can take your chairs and you can stay around for a little while or you can leave, whatever no, you choose. No, we'll let you guys do what you got to do. <laughs> Thank you. Are you sure? We'd like you to stay. <laughs> yeah. No, this is too intense. Gosh. Thanks for coming. Let me have a little bit of hair left. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Stay yeah, guys. Thanks, you guys. Have a good evening. Appreciate your time. Thanks. 6.1 6 resolve the building and demolition permits for two, uh, sorry, 424 through 1124 with a total estimated value of $92,709 be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. All permits on the list they meet are, or are within the bylaw requirements. Yeah. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, seven, seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. What is the potential risk for overland flooding in the area? Do you feel there is one? From the Swan River, uh, the risk is low. There was uh, potential for an ice jam last week. Uh, so Matt Lennick was in contact with either Safe Job Officer, uh, but also our uh, contact with EMO. Um, so he was contacting EMO, and uh, there were some missed drone shots on the uh, ice jam. We never saw the ice jam go by, but we did see the river jump. Uh, but it's now gone down a bit. Matt talked to EMO this morning uh, because of the overland flood warning you'll see from Duck Mountains it goes all the way to the Paw. Um, but they were saying that that's more outside of the river so that's based on the rain and precipitation that's coming so it'll be flooding gravel roads uh, from ditches and creeks they expect more than the river and Matt was checking the river I think it was two this afternoon out at Cotton's Bridge and it was lower than it had been. So we're continuing to monitor, but it's not expected with this current rain that it would affect the river to the point of flooding. It's more likely it will be uh, like the gravel roads in the surrounding area, but we'll continue to monitor. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Bobbick? I just wonder if there's been any movement on engineering the landfill work yet. Yeah, I'm just working on the RFP okay. for that. Perfect, thank you. Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, Mr. Harvey, what's the uh, deficiency with the generator at the utility that you guys are problem solving or? Uh, that was just the deficiency list that he's working on. Uh, so I haven't seen it yet. It's just little cleanups kind of thing. One of them was uh, 
the line coming into the generator was solid and had to be a flexible line. Oh, it's those types of things. Yeah, it's not a no, nothing not major. Not the generator. Just, okay, just cool. The typical end of a project. Okay, I got you now. Thanks. Okay, anything further? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 7.2. Result of March 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Boydshack, seconded by Councillor Midwood. Discussion? Councillor Midwood. Under the customer type, it says wheelchair elderly, and for March we have 71, which is considerably higher, almost triple the previous month and January. So I'm just wondering if that's a typo or if that is. Literally, we had 71 people. Uh, I would believe what's on the report. Okay. And uh, the Brandon Gilbert Plains one in the long distance trips. Do we know if those were for medical or were they part of the shopping slash visiting? Brandon Gilbert Plains and. Uh, and where? The last one's on the report. There was just the two to Brandon and two to Gilbert Plains. Yeah. I'll have to get back to you on that. You're both made a call. Okay, oh, thank man. you. Thanks, you for being here. And do we have a flat rate fee for these trips, or is it based on mileage when we're going to places like Brandon, Gilbert Plains, Dauphin? There's a, just a, if you take a look at the fee schedule, it's based on, on a minimum. Uh, rate, then there's a per kilometer when they go on the long trips. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything further? All in favor? It's carried. Council and sales reports. We'll start with uh, Councillor White heading uh, out of the AMM and a good week. <coughs> so let me start with the, your report. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, April 3, we uh, had an immigrant services meeting that they lost one of their executive, but uh, these were replaced. April the 4th, we had a medical service meeting in Dauphin, uh, which I, I felt was exemplary. I want to thank uh, Reeve Bierman, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, and Dr. Kazakoff uh, from the local clinic for coming. We met, I think, we eight doctors there, R1s and R2, R1 being available next year, R2 being available this spring. and. Uh, it was very positive, it was very casual, very informal, and uh, the people in PMH and our local people have uh, sent messages back to us that say, hey, we've got to do this more often. And so uh, we stay optimistic, and uh, we're hoping some of them will come up here, and more coming, absolutely. Uh, April 8th, Immigrant Services, uh, I just can't say enough about that, that service, providing uh, people a home and from more torn countries. What, what could we do that was more important than that? So I'm just excited about that. We're part of that. We, we donate monies to that. Uh, it, it's fantastic from a cultural perspective. And of course, those people stay and work and pay taxes or economically wise. Then the night we went to the AMM in Brandon, which was, uh, I'll try to be brief. Uh, we, uh, the, well, the first one that I attended, we, we split it to groups. We went to all different ones. And uh, there's lots of good communication and collaboration going on amongst the, the council members. Uh, the, the term yes and not but and that when people ask you questions so I found I really like that how to how to communicate and accept criticism without getting angry and deal with people that may disagree with you without thinking the world has come to an end and that was uh, the theory uh, theme I got we talked about housing needs how to do that and one that really resonated with me with the prevention of aquatic invasive species and the information they shared with us that these uh, zebra mussels which are in Clear Lake Clear Lake drains into the river system that goes into Brown and it drains into a river system that goes into Portage to Prairie. Hypothetically, worst case scenario, they could shut those two cities right down as they plug, they plug drain pipes. So as a consequence that I was talking with Dr. Lamb today, the speaker, and he, Dr. Long rather, and he's uh, hopefully coming up for our fish dinner on May the 4th to do a presentation to three to four hundred fishers and uh, share with them the, the immense concerns that, that those aquatic species have, extremely uh, health-wise, biodiversity-wise, and economically. Then uh, the keynote speaker we said it was the medical services, so they need 
Sonny Gusas, he's a, a CEO for Shared Services. And uh, Jenny Eves also spoke. And I can't say enough about how Swan River and the Swan Valley, I wish they would have said Swan Valley, but they said Swan River, they don't appreciate that part, but that's fine. It's so complimentary to our valley, to our community, the people that work together. And uh, as a consequence of that, I can tell you that they've chatted with some of us on our board, uh, possibly coming up and meeting with the medical services team and doing a video on what we have done as a valley. We had at least three, four other uh, mayors, Reeves, etc., come and approach me and say, how do you guys get that all done? And we get it done because of our community, how we work together, accept criticism, criticize one another, and, and, and get somewhere together. So uh, I was really excited about that. And workplace communication, another one on Thursday. Board of Revision, uh, uh, we're secured that one. I lots of things I didn't know about, so that was really positive. How people can, can appeal their taxes. You don't have to accept the taxes you get from government. There is a board at the moment, this council sits on as that board. And then another keynote speaker was the STARS on the ambulance, uh, air ambulance. Uh, extremely well organized and uh, articulate people. And, and uh, I like what they had to say. And then one of the last one we talked to was laptop security, computer security and how we can't be too secure because there's people all over the world making a business out of hacking banks and communities. So uh, just a pretty rewarding thing. Uh, the council had uh, shared a lot of, a lot of stuff. We, uh, a lot of networking. Uh, with, uh, I think uh, Premier Canoe's right-hand man was with us for a brief period of time, had a good visit with him, uh, meeting with the other Reeves, other mayors, other MLAs. So I, I would encourage uh, everybody that can attend those meetings from a municipal perspective to do so. Uh, it, it certainly will help our communities as a whole. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Bob. Thank you, Mayor Jacobs. Uh, yes, I uh, just had a brief meeting with Director Harvey here, just uh, happened to be in the office and uh, a former engineer, just kind of went over some things. We went over to Ottawa occurring here in town all over the place, so maybe, uh, and again, this is just my suggestion if an assessment could be done, you know, have a look at it, I think we may be looking at a little bit of uh, batching material here. So we also talked about gravel on the centennial here. Uh, we spoke on the, the back alley between 8th and 9th, and uh, again, I spoke already on the, on the burn, so. Uh, the con convention, I went to a, procurement and the disaster with DFA, I actually was asked to speak on that because of the, over the years I've worked on numerous flood sites with DFA and Standac over there, so I actually spoke on it a bit, so that was very interesting. I went to the water licensing one, uh, really nothing new when it pertains to the Thomas Swan River, but there is some new licensing going on there. Spent some major time in the trade show, which I think it would be valuable for Director Harvey for our foreman to attend in one day, something to, for you to meet these people that you talk to all the time. So um, my suggestion would be to council is to, in the future, trade shows, are, which are usually in Brandon, that that would be a ideal place for you to meet with these people who you deal with every day. So, and that's pretty much it. Okay. I'll, Councilor, I'll do it at Okay, Councillor Paul. Mm, okay. Um, I've had a few little information sessions with the library. Um, we have, uh, I guess we should, I have to thank Nikki for uh, being on the board, but she's resigned as a, a member for with the library board. So we will be looking for a new member there. Um, we, uh, yeah, we went to, I guess, basically went to the AMA as well and had lots of great, lots of great information and lots to bring back. I think we uh, all really enjoy it. Uh, we just went to the rec had a rec committee meeting here just recently and lots of good discussion, lots of lots of positives and lots of things that they're doing and, and you know, getting things together there too as well. Um, the other thing it is, you know, this can go on it after. Okay. okay. <coughs> You're good? Mm -hmm. Councilor Medley. Oh, well, I was at the AMMs as well, so my takeaway from the keynote speaker on collaborative communication is the all parties need to be engaging with open, forward, and flexible thinking with focus on achieving win-win solutions versus a focus on winning at all costs or how to best defend our preconceived opinions and judgment. I found it kind of similar to what Cadmus Delorme was 
uh, message he was giving with regards to meeting for rec reconciliation. And I'm hoping our council is going to apply some of these concepts to our continued work on the accommodation tax bylaw. I attended a few breakout sessions, the municipal power couple, building a healthy council and CAO relationship, municipal government, uh, governance, and peak performance exploring team dysfunction. We were recognized uh, for being one of many communities or municipalities that have a strategic plan in the municipal governance presentation, but as was pointed out in the municipal power couple presentation, if a council is not actually using their strategic plan to guide our annual budget plans, administrative reports, and status updates to serve the visions within that strategic plan, then it's kind of a waste of time, money, and is really nothing more than a pretty document that we allow to collect dust. So something to keep in mind as we're moving forward that we should be tying everything into our strategic plan and making sure we're trying to accomplish those visions for our future. Um, exploring team dysfunction and municipal governments, they both spoke to being proactively seeking public input and majority of negative communication from the public is usually due to misunderstanding and lack of information. So some of the recommendations in their presentations was recommending that we open up our agendas on all net to the public so that the public sees the same documents that council has access to with each agenda item so then they can understand where our discussions and or decisions are coming from because they have the same information we have and it might reduce the amount of phone calls that our office gets or receives because they don't understand why council is moving in that direction. Uh, they also, there was also the recommendation for implementing a variety of means for reaching out to the public for input and feedback before making decisions as well. Uh, the municipal power couple one also spoke to administration software used to log all calls received, sorting into categories, and it has the ability to generate reports and stats that can not only be shared with the public, but also with staff and council, so we can use it for being able to confirm response times when people are calling about services or outages or problems with water mains or anything like that. It will actually record how long it went from the time the call was received to the time of resolution was implemented. It puts it in nice little pie charts. It looked really good. And it also is a great tool for council and administration to be looking at our service targets being met within our policies and bylaws. And if not, do we need to look at changing the way we implement the policy and bylaw, or do we need to change the policy and bylaw to meet what we can actually accomplish? So uh, I believe that supports uh, CAO pools. Uh, previous communication with us regarding some administrative software he was wanting to consider for the town. I think that would uh, reinforce the, the need and the value to that. In the uh, municipal power couple one, it also spoke to the need for council to conduct annual reviews with our CAO to foster that healthy relationship and ensure expectations from both sides are being met with regards to governance versus management. And that we're each party is staying within their lanes and boundaries and it was also made clear that a chair's responsibility is to ensure a meeting stays on track and no misconduct such as individual council members giving direction to CAO or staff or not supporting a councillor and being successful is allowed to happen. Uh, preventing aquatic invasive species in addition to what Councillor White shared. My takeaway was that the Province of Manitoba is actually putting together a lot of promotional material and the request was that municipalities share it on their social media, on their website and help get the word out and help spread that word. Another thing that came out of that was the request to support any municipalities that are currently dealing with the uh, zebra mussel. If they what they're finding is the province is not currently in a position to offer a whole lot of help. So if resolutions come forward to AMM to lobby the provincial government for more supports and resources that we support that and get on board with it. 
I did have a chance to meet with Bola, the CAO from the PAW, and we discussed the community safety well-being projects between our communities, and I followed up with uh, connecting her with James Wigley and Derek Armstrong to get more information on how our community task force teams came to be and the work that our community did prior to uh, embarking on the community safety well-being project. She was very interested in a few of our task forces and what they were focusing on. And also to build that bridge between the Paw, Swan River, and Dauphin so we're all kind of working together collaboratively collaboratively on the common issues. Uh, services to seniors meeting today. Um, Mountain has officially passed a resolution to provide and secure funding for this group for the next five years. Uh, seniors cooperative housing presentation. That is taking place at the Friendship Center on April 22nd, 2024 at 1 p.m. So if you are interested in learning more about uh, it's being hosted by Community Futures, who's partnered with Cooperatives First to host the information session. And it'll be addressing this shortage requires a comprehensive, oh, sorry, housing shortages uh, requires a comprehensive approach to involving collaboration between government agencies, nonprofit organizations, private developers, and community stakeholders as a possible housing solution option in our community. Uh, CMHA Homeless Housing Project, they've got their funding extended until the end of July, which was great news. And since starting their project March 1st, the participants have not incurred any new convictions or charges, so that is excellent news in my opinion, and my hat goes off to all the people working on that project and helping our vulnerable population to feel safe, have reliable housing, and combined with those wraparound services, getting some positive results for that. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Boychuk. Um, a lot has been spoken to about the uh, spring AMM. Great speakers, informative breakout sessions, attended the municipal power couple, building that healthy relationship with the CAO. Uh, the peak performance, exploring team dysfunction, and also the liabil liability and risk management. Um, and then we also attended the Women in Municipal Government uh, in the evening, which was uh, a really nice evening and uh, great speaker, Bridget, I can't remember if it's Smith. Smith? Minister Smith. Yeah, Minister Smith was there and uh, she was uh, very down to earth and uh, had some great messages out there. Yeah as far as women in municipal government. Uh, had a recreation meeting tonight prior to this meeting, and we have a meeting with uh, Swan Valley Legacy Committee tomorrow night, and another recreation meeting on Thursday night coming up. And then uh, Monday is Chamber of Commerce, and Tuesday is the CAL coming up again, so, uh, and the meetings keep coming, so I don't think there'll be much free time. And that's it for me. <coughs> uh, not really, eh? Anyway, uh, uh, Deputy Memorial, thank you. Mm, yeah, so April 3rd, I was in uh, Dauphin with Councillor White and Reed Beerman regarding uh, what medical services with uh, meeting the R1 and R2 residents, um, which was uh, very impressive, and they were impressed with our presentation. And a few of them have uh, already expressed interest that they will looking to come up here and tour the valley and see what we have to offer with them. So hopefully some of those discussions will be fruitful in the near future um, for them to choose their pathway and where they're going to set up their practice. Um, last week, I was also at the Spring AMM. Uh, a lot of the stuff has been uh, spoken to already, so I won't rehash that. But uh, two of the sessions that uh, I've been to that were brought forward uh, was the community-based medical first response, uh, which is a new um, revision to the act where it'll allow uh, communities with their fire department to offer different stages or different levels of medical first response should they so choose. Um, one with the full meal deal of fully licensed uh, EMRs or paramedics on the fire truck um, or um, a chopped down version where it is a, a non-registered um, advanced first aid, um, basically uh, a 40 hour course versus a 300 hour course, um, which provides the, the meatball basics in a true emergency versus 
more of the advanced care that a licensed paramedic or EMR would bring. So, so it is now um, coming, I guess, in my world, uh, come full circle from 15, 20 years ago when that discussion, when I was part of the bandwagon kicking that around, it got shot down, we're back at square one again. So it's like everything else. So um, next session I was at, was at the restructuring of 911 in Manitoba. So uh, currently we are in e, uh, advanced E911, um, but now with the, the new technologies out there, um, there is a new countrywide uh, revision of, to the 911 system where it's an improvement um, where the dispatchers and that will be have more capabilities and a lot more information um, when they get that caller and even particularly from vehicles itself like when you hit the OnStar uh, the, the data that's transmitted with that the dispatcher will be actually be able to see that versus uh, just a GPS location so um, there's some whole restructuring there um, our dispatch center in Brandon, the E911 center, is fully um, hardware and software transition. They're just waiting for the uh, um, system to pull the trigger to transition uh, later this year or early next year. So uh, Manitoba is, is, is ready to move that trigger to move the 911 dispatching center to the next level. So, um, The two other courses I was spoken to um, with that, I uh, also met with the offline, the uh, fire commissioner from the office of the fire commissioner um, to touch base with the uh, fire board as to where we're at and some of the challenges that we're still having um, in dealing with mutual aid agreements and all that stuff. And he's uh, offering to assist us in some of those uh, issues to move those discussions forward and, and go from there. So, but, uh, and then again, the trade show very important. There was a lot of suppliers um, that are there that you can touch base with and gather information. So uh, it was a very informative and I guess uh, a very large trade show again this year. So and basically that's um, with that. Uh, then after what ongoing stuff, fire board operational stuff, um, and then uh, the fire chief just came back um, from looking for a pre-construction build. Uh, with the new fire truck, it is in the line, it's being constructed, so he had a tour of the final design before um, it's too late, before welders and all that get going, and then so it's uh, everything was checked off there, um, and then that the fire service is uh, fully prepared for any uh, wildfire or grass fires that we have in our response area, so we're fully, uh, all equipment's prepared, so. And then the ongoing discussions with uh, our neighbors, Swan Valley West, to try and continue to meet with them on shared services. So hopefully we can touch base with them. Um, the dialogue is continuing and hopefully we'll have some dis fruitful discussions in the very near future. So, and that's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for myself, uh, of course on the AMM uh, convention, uh, CEO Poole and I both traveled in uh, a day early in order to uh, attend the, uh, the Mayor's Reeves and uh, CAO session on Tuesday morning. Uh, just a few things there, you know, the AMM's talking about, you know, focusing uh, or continuing to focus on the uh, 2023 election uh, platform with the four pillars, with the funding, uh, fairness and predictability we talked about, investing in uh, core infrastructure, invest in people, and also in public safety. So those pillars will lead us into uh, our next meeting at the uh, Lobby Days in Winnipeg next week when I attend with the AMM and the rest of the board. Uh, we talked about the uh, in the budget for 2024, the increase of 2% for the basket funding. Obviously we wanted more, but uh, we'll welcome that. And also the fact that the province now has made the commitment to have the basket funding in place so that's a good thing for all of us uh for our um, administration just to keep uh, an eye out for uh, the youth employment projects the green team uh some information as that is going to be coming out very soon so keep uh keep an eye on that if it comes to me before then uh, or you see it i will definitely let you know about that too uh, because that is coming very very soon the view of bill 37 um we'll, we'll all get a 
an opportunity to uh, participate. I think this has kind of affected more of the southern municipalities than us, but nevertheless, we will have a chance to uh, participate. Disa disaster financial assistance, they have talked about the, uh, the uh, stages of the modernization of the program. And so uh, it was kind of interesting. We had kind of a session. It didn't really pertain too much as for us because the town of Swanover really has never really applied much to that, but it does definitely affect more of the rural areas on the DFAA. And uh, they're looking at rebuilding or taking the opportunity to rebuild that program. So I know that maybe with Watershed, that might be something that Watershed will be maybe participating in because I think that that is one uh, of the uh, stakeholders with that uh, uh, program. Um, they will engage with the municipalities, like I said, and public groups that are affected by the program. Um, one of the breakout sessions that I went to that was on community events and uh, definitely learned a little bit there and uh, some things that we need to keep uh, you know, a track of is uh, events that happen if we have, a, if it's accidents or something with uh, an individual or whatever due to our liability, we need to make sure that we're taking notes of, of uh, those events because uh, you may not have a claim on it in, say, this year or six months or two months. It can take up to two years. So they often say, uh, make sure that we're um, taking all the information while it's fresh in your minds of this certain event that may happen. Um, they spoke on the inflatables, workshop, uh, sort of fireworks, parades, and so forth, and making sure that there is that liability that's available, or they have their own liability insurance as well. Western Financial is willing always to work with uh, us and our community uh, on our community events, so we make sure that we keep them uh, close by to us. Uh, one last thing that kind of I learned about was uh, halls and when we rent out the halls that the renter should also have their liability and we talked a little bit about that in our administration. We'll look into that a little bit but um, it's interesting how that is and, and, and when a few of them are sitting there going well nobody ever does that and actually a few of the municipalities put up their hands and they said yeah we do this. So I think that there's some gray areas there too but uh, yeah. Border revision, I know that somebody had mentioned about that, I think it was Councillor White, and uh, good presentation on there. Um, as we know that you can be, uh, it can be an elected board, like from members of council, or um, people that are from the community. And um, more and more communities are appointing people within uh, the community on those boards rather than having uh, uh, people that are elected. The biggest thing there is to make sure that all board of revisions are fair and often they say don't make the decision on the on the presentation at board of revision make it afterwards so they have time to review and look at uh, what that uh, application is if you have an application <clears throat> one thing um, on the center for rural economic development which is a federal program it was interesting to see or hear that the prairie region which is uh, all of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Nunavut, Nunavut, I think, yes, I think I'm right, um, received out of that program about 8% of funding. And as an example, Ontario received about 39%. So it's interesting to see where a lot of that money is going. But they did invite to work on that as well. And I know we have a relationship with them as well. Last night I had uh, our Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation meeting. Um, we're working on renovating uh, the house that we own, which we rent out uh, frequently to agency nurses and so forth to use, but uh, we have to do some work to that uh, building. It was interesting to see that we had, uh, in one of our funds, we have a cataract fund, and that cataract, we receive, you know, voluntary donations periodically, but um, we received uh, a nice, uh, donation from the Capravel uh, Rotarians who uh, made a donation to our cataract uh, uh, program. Uh, also, we've received more donations for our CT scanner as well. And this is just uh, March 31st, well, that we're at about hundred and almost $114,000 in publicly raised funds for the CT scan. So that's a great thing too. Um, they have recruited 
three long-term care aides from the Philippines and uh, <coughs> one nurse and more to come. And it was interesting they were talking about how they just don't put them on a bus and send them here. There's actually people that go from the community and go pick them up and take them shopping and bring them back and you know just really introduce them to the community with uh, settlement services and all that also included. So some good things out of there too that kind of make me think of how Jenny Ives um, presentation and, and how the community uh, strengths and all that were you know a big part of her making her decision on staying in the valley. That's it for me. Anything from the CAO? Uh, yeah, advertising for clerical staff uh, commencing here to fill that position. Uh, we're planning the June district meeting, so we're looking for for ideas with local flavor and uh, just for council to stay tuned for the dates to travel up to Sapatoyak for the, the fourth MDSA <clears throat> within the limits. And I don't want to say too much uh, that's already been said on the AMM, just uh, to thank my staff. I had some vacation in then the AMM on terrible long-term planning on my part, but uh, they held the ship together, thank you. And uh, just the importance, just to add the importance of networking uh, why elected, elected officials don't go in municipalities, I don't understand. It's, uh, it's so important to, to just have the conversation with your peers and, and listen to the same issues that they likely have, very similar to the ones that we're dealing with. And, and you know, they, they could bring a, another set of eyes to a solution that we're all having. But uh, in addition to that, the, the contacts, uh, the, the Federal Regional Economic Development Officer, uh, that new contact, the uh, people from inside the, the Premier's office, when we send those correspondence, they remember us because of, because of the AMM and then we all go. So I just wanted to speak to the networking and how important it is. That's it. Definitely very important. And, and we've, we've met, I don't know how many different people over the years, you know, in previous government <coughs> and new government and so forth, but uh, some very good uh, relationship building and networking at the same time. And, and, you know, I had some great conversations with the mayor from Thompson, you know, and, and she's always, you know, she does a lot more traveling than I get a chance to travel and, and visit some people and, and government people and ministers and so forth. But she always tells me, she said, you know what, we're always looking out for you guys in Swan River too, and we're bringing you up too. So she's, uh, she's uh, always thinking about us as well, so I really thank her for doing that in her council. All right, moving on, uh, 8.1. Whereas the Municipal Bylaw Enforcement Act, CCSM, CM 245 permits the establishment of an administrative penalty scheme for municipalities to enforce their bylaws. And whereas the act and our, and our bylaws requires that a screening officer be appointed to review and make decisions with regards to any screening requests. Resolve that the chief administrative officer be appointed as screening officer under the current penalty notice scheme for all contraventions listed under Schedule A of the Enforcement Bylaw, except for contraventions of the Structural Standard Bylaw. And be it further resolved that the Council of the Town of Swanover be appointed as screening officer for offenses under the Structural Structure standard bylaw. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Resolve that the variance order 1 2024 for lot 4, plan 71596, uh, Dolphin <laughs> Land Title Office, be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.3. Whereas the Association of Manitoba Municipalities annual conventions include a large trade show during spring convention and arguably larger needs for an in-person meetings between all levels of government during the fall convention, and whereas the spring and fall conventions rotate back and forth between the cities of Brandon and Winnipeg in Manitoba, and whereas 
The venue in Brandon provides ease of access in comparison to accommodate the larger trade show and provide sufficient meeting space for the AMM Spring Convention. And whereas the venue in Winnipeg provides ease of logistics for sitting ministers and other provincial and federal elected officials to attend the AMM Fall Convention, as the legislature is typically sitting prior to the holiday break and provides increased quality and availability in comparison to accommodate the need for increase in person in-person meetings during the AMM Fall Convention. Therefore, be it resolved that the AMM commit to hold their annual spring convention in a venue within the city of Brandon, Manitoba, and the annual fall convention in a venue within the city of the Winnipeg, Manitoba. Moved by Dr. Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> yes, um, I was asked of them bringing this uh, resolution forward. Um, hopefully pass at our council so that it can be brought to the June district meeting. Um, and as we know, as, if you, as you have been attending the AMM conventions, traditionally the spring convention is more of a larger trade show and more of training events. And then the fall convention is more of a policy and meeting with ministers and other departments um, on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and when you get to know the facilities, uh, Brandon is more suited for the larger trade show with the larger equipment's ease of access um, uh, for that, along with sufficient space um, for training sessions. But then, in reversely, in, in Winnipeg, uh, in the fall, it's more suited at, or conducive to have uh, the policy type sessions um, and then have the breakout sessions where we have the meetings with the ministers and other uh, organizations that uh, makes it a little bit more challenging in the fall. So, so uh, um, instead of having, as it is now, um, a fall and spring in one city and then fall and spring in the opposite city, alternating back and forth, uh, the resolution's proposing that uh, going forward, should it be accepted by AMM uh, at the fall conference, um, that uh, spring AMM's uh, conference be held in Brand and, and, and fall convention in the city, uh, which makes it a lot more conducive to uh, do transactions, so. Okay, for the discussion, Councilor Bobbitt. Just with that, with the trade shows and the stuff, I think lots of the equipment dealers and stuff don't even bother coming to Winnipeg at the time because of the <coughs> logistics of getting the equipment there, I think that they will lose some of the trade show. If that trade show was in Brandon and stated there that that trade show would only get bigger and better because they would know exactly where they're going. So that would be more than a Okay. Uh, next item is the Resolves uh, resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31428 to number 31497, totaling $178,217.99 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5435 to number 5440, totaling $104,484.55 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling four thousand three hundred and thirty six dollars and fifty eight cents as listed on schedule c moved by councillor boychuk seconded by councillor powell discussion councillor bobbick uh zero zero three one four seven nine adams contracting for fourteen thousand two hundred and forty three dollars twenty five cents that would that price be included in uh, brush cutting that was occurred on 275? Uh, not that one. That was several digs that okay. we had with them. Okay, so that price that I guess is off the subject, but I believe it. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, 31454, 31458, 31475, and 31489 are in reference to visa 
bank statements as well as a co-op statement, but we have no explanation for the charges to those accounts. So if we can have that provided, please. That's um, three one four five four five eight seven five and eight nine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think there might have been one other one in there, but I didn't have it highlighted. Uh, three one four. So let me just. So you're asking to have the visa statement for all those uh, transactions, or like all the transactions on yes, the visa statement. Yes. Usually, the CFO's explanation includes the breakdown of what that one amount is towards. So. We don't have that explanation, so I would like it. Uh, 31430, 31461, 31481, 31491. Uh, they are checks to individuals. I don't know if their staff or not, but they're all in excess uh, well, of a few hundred dollars in excess, so I'm just wondering what those are for. That's for equipment, for their, like, their apparel art boots yeah. and all that. Uh, go ahead, uh, Director Clausen. I know 31491 is probably uh, something to do with hall rental. They have a social. This could be their deposit, maybe pop or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a weird amount, but I recognize the name. There would be a variety that could be... I think you're right, because I signed that check. Something like that? Yeah. I do notice that there are, there are employees listed on there. It can be uh, disbursements, but uh, there could be anything from deposit returns, but we will get back to you. Okay. And Go ahead. Three one four three five three one four four one three one four 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 three one four four five. Uh, let me just scroll down. Three one four six two three one four six three three one four six four three one four seven one. Uh, Bob already asked on that one. And 31496, I would like to know what those charges and expenses were for. Okay, we can get back to you on a follow up. Uh, Councilor Boychuk. I might not be remembering this correct, but did we not get an email advising us if we had questions to email CFO prior to the meeting? and then get that clarification. Like I know I did that after we got that the last meeting, I had one question and then I just forwarded it to the whole group, figuring that somebody else might have the same question. Yeah, usually the checks are posted uh, quite a bit in advance, so that's always helpful. If you give it to us in advance, we can give it to you even sometimes prior to the meeting. Um, but then we can, then we know what's expected, we can answer instead of always following. Council chooses to have a procedure on that, that's up to council to make that decision. Then, if you want to do that or stick to that policy or whatever, but okay. you can answer these, you know, and, and go from there. Is there anything, anything further? All in favor? Let's carry. <coughs> 10.2 resolved that the Swan Lake Watershed District 2024-25 annual levy for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2025 in the amount of $13,698.22 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Bovic, second by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling three thousand four hundred thirty-nine and nine cents. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in the matter under subsections 252 2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advertising that interest will accrue 
on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective May 1st, 2024. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas, whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provide that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on April the 5th, 2024, be made to the 2024 business tax roll, with the resulting increase in business tax being $103.74. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor uh, Medwood. Yes, I still believe that our business tax bylaw needs to be reviewed because it going into the general account is not, I don't believe, serving the purpose of what a business tax collection is supposed to be for. Going into the general account is where Funding from our property taxes being commercial aggressive. Go ahead. Um, uh, the conversation we're dealing with an assessment of changing the assessment alteration, not the purpose of the business tax. Correct. You're you're out of order. I'm just expressing the reason why I'll be opposing the resolution. Okay. I haven't called the the, the question, but okay. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw 1, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a structure standard, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Boychuk. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Midwood. In the supporting documents, it's indicating here that we're not going to look to enforce it until June 1st of 2024. So I'm wondering if our resolution should actually be amended to clearly state that it will come into effect June 1st, 2024. Because if I understand things correctly, as soon as we pass this, it would technically be in effect. So that might help reduce misunderstanding of when it is officially in effect. There's probably no harm in that. It's no. In there. Was it in there? Yeah. It is in the bylaw. We added it as section 13. 13. However, I do agree with Councillor Medwood that it could create confusion if we pass the resolution approving the bylaw. And people may miss section. Maybe I misunderstood. I thought that you meant to have the, the resolution read the date. Yes. Yeah. yeah not the right. actual. Okay. We can do that. We can make the amendment if the mover and secondary agrees. Okay, uh, go ahead. I agree. Okay. So then we need uh, a mover to agenda to amend the resolution. Is that not what Councillor Boychuk just did? The mover, I'm the mover. I agree to make the amendment. The seconder is Deputy Mayor Morio. Yeah, I'm just saying what it's going to include, though. Um, the. Uh, uh, I don't know. Be read a third time and passed. Um, and come into effect. Uh, after to establish a structure standard, you refresh. Okay. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, do we have to vote on that? You have to vote on the amendment. Yeah. Okay. So the mover and the seconder have agreed to the amending resolution. So you, I would read it and ask the question. Okay. So then, um, yeah, so we, the mover and the seconder do agree, right? Yeah, for the amendment. Okay. okay. So resolve the bylaw 1 2024 being a bylaw of the town of Swanover to establish a structural standard 
and come into effect as of Jan June the 1st, 2024, be read a third time and be passed. Okay. Any further discussion? Council Medford. What are the plans for advertising to the public and making sure the message is getting out? Uh, we intend to use town page, all social media platforms. Uh, I'm trying to think of development, like possibly we could send it to, to the real estate agents. I don't, I don't know, but really it'll be the paper, uh, the radio, our social media platform, website, but uh, we could take suggestions. We want it, we want it out there because this will be a contentious bylaw. Councillor Boyce. Maybe including it in the next assessment mailing or in the next uh, water bill statement might be a good thing. I just include it with it. It's a good idea. Won't cost us anything extra. Anything further? Okay, it's a recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Unanimous. Okay, 11.2. Resolve the bylaw number 4, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swander to amend the cited bylaws to be administrated by penalty notice and where applicable, and where applicable that lot of fines be added to taxes be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, second by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? I think there might be a word missing from the resolution. On the second line it says no where applicable that fines may added to taxes. I think we need to be added. May be added. Yes. If you catch, thank you. It mentions that this is going to be posted on all net. Is that going to be accessible to the public? To uh, through the website, yes. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, this is a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. It's unanimous. Okay, 11.3. Result of bylaw 10, 2024, being a bylaw to establish a fire hall reserve fund, be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Bobber. Uh, can I have a reason we need a new fire hall? Discussion on that for maybe the... I guess I think the thing is the thing is, on this I think is is the thoughts of in the future we have to start yeah, thinking about that. in the future not at this moment right now it is in our I think in our capital plan that we have we are planning a fire new fire truck or uh, building at some point in time but it's not at this moment but I can't speak on everybody's thoughts on that but go ahead um, this is uh, a changeover from the um, I guess the existing fire truck uh, replacement reserve. Um, that would, has been solely contributed to by the town of Swan River and not jointly with um, the other municipal partners. So this is the balance. And since with the establishment of the um, Valley Fire Department, um, the town is no longer responsible for buying fire trucks after this, initial, this one. So this money um, has been uh, being proposed that um, as part of the agreement, the town is still responsible to provide the fire hall and any capital repairs and upgrades. And this is where uh, it's just a changeover from um, fire truck purchase to the maintenance or construction or whatever of the f current fire hall. Okay, so Go ahead. I'm under the impression this can be for upgrades, did yes. you say, and repairs? Yeah. Um, it's uh, as it reads, because it gives the civic address of the the, of the bylaw, so it's not a new fire hall somewhere else. It's to the capital upgrades or repairs to the current fire hall, okay. which our partners have no input into. Correct, because the town is still responsible to maintain 
um, the firehouse has they're still the owner and as part of the agreement uh, there was each municipality was responsible to for the repairs and upgrade of okay. the, the okay. fire okay. Council White. So what I'm reading is for the purpose of funding capital expenditures, that doesn't mean to me building a new fireball, it means keeping this fund chip here. I'm not sure I understood. Are all the other municipal are all the other municipal governments also responsible for upgrading that hall or just us? That that hall is the property of the town of Swan River and it is the town of Swan River's responsibility to maintain that. Swan Valley West has a responsibility to keep their hall, like fire hall number two, that's the old Thunder West, uh, the capital upgrades and maintenance of, of that building. That's so so each municipality is, is responsible for each of their building because the fire the valley fire board leases those buildings from each municipality. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. For the discussion, Councillor Bobbitt. So nothing can be taken under that reserve without a resolution from council. I would Perfect. have to think so because okay. it's, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 16 members privilege. Councillor Bobbitt. Thank you, Mayor Jacob. Uh, just wondering where we are with our turning light on Main Street here. If there's been any action on that. If we spoke to anybody or maybe we should be meeting with the new Minister of Highways. Um, you're talking about at the so-called subway corner? Yeah. Uh, um, we had that meeting with the previous minister about them and wanted to have the public consultation, right? Yeah. So government changes. Now we're kind of limbo, but uh, I don't know if you've had any conversation with them, but my plan when I was going to be at the uh, lobby days next week uh, with the AMM to uh, ask the minister about that. Perfect. So, I don't know if you want to comment on that. We, we've sent our packages in for every minister for the previous ministers. We forwarded on to the, the new offices. So we <coughs> do know, but we, we haven't had correspondence back on that issue. Okay. Uh, just uh, if you're speaking to the minister on that with highways, if you go to any other town, I shouldn't say any other town, but if you take a look at our ditches in and out of the town of Swan River, they're all with willows and stuff. I think the first impression, that, and that's a highway's responsibility. I don't know how we push that to do some cleanup on our outside the outskirts of the town of Thunder. They need to have a look at that. It seems to be when I loaded off and everything's mowed up and it looks pretty there. I'd like to see the town of Thunder have the same impression when you're driving the town. So if you're speaking with the minister, give me a hint. I think that it would be appropriate for us to send a letter to the department and then have the minister copied on that with us also with our municipal uh, neighbors as well. Okay. Uh, just speaking with CAO Poole here, it's happening. I think another assessment needs to be done around the town of Swan River because we need to look at a long term pavement revitalization or stuff or overlays and stuff. The town of Swan River is getting some streets that are pretty rough and need to be looked at to do an overlay and I guess an overlay would be something to look at if the water and sewer is good under there but it would be nice to have something for the future here that we need to start looking at overlays on some of these streets are getting pretty rough. Uh, just to speak a bit about shared health, uh, congratulations to the medical team. Uh, when other municipalities stand up at a convention and congratulate the town of Swan River and, and, and bring on a round of applause. I think the medical team should be congratulated mm -hmm. on what's been done here over the years. It's a hats off to Mr. Morio or Deputy Mayor Moyer on Council White. Council White, you did a very good job at the mic. I was really impressed. So uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, just to give you a little bit of an upgrade on the watershed, when I speak about it, I was going to do this, but I'll do it now. So. This year the watershed is going to be, we have a, the Prairie Watershed um, Fund which comes to us, we'll be looking at $700,000 and we're shooting for a million on it, so we have approached for a million dollars. That entails nitrogen management, cover cropping, rotational grazing. We also have what's called the Ralph Program, we're looking at $200,000 there and that is riparian, stream bank stabilization and livestock watering. Uh, we have the Lake Winnipeg Basin, which is about $50,000, which comes into 
takes into fact some other things like water testing. We've done, or they've done, I should say. Like we do about 100 tests a year on wells and stuff that are sent away and stuff like that. So to, the watershed is getting to be known as a place to take your water tests. Like sometimes when people buy houses in the country, they, they'll need to be, their well will need to be tested before they can get financing. So it's providing a very valuable service. Uh, the Lake Winnipeg Foundation uh, is what supports our testing of the rivers. We test uh, the Swan River, the Roaring River, the Woody River, the North Duck River, and the Birch River. It's an ongoing thing. We have a green team and they're all tested. And like I spoke before, we will be, if we can get, when there, there is a discharge, if you could make this a time frame, our tests will show up there. It'd be very interesting to see which way that goes. Just to let you know that the watershed on batteries that just the small batteries we have the depot one. We actually sent in 200 kilograms of batteries last year on recycling, so they're, they're doing lots of things. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Boychuk. Well, it's interesting to know about the batteries. I didn't know about that. Yeah. I, I know where I'll be taking money now. Um, I have to say, I was in another community earlier today and while I agree with you on our roads, some of them are getting into the, the need of disrepair. Um, and I might have been in this community during the winter time. Uh, and one thing I noticed was that their streets weren't really plowed. And like this was like second or third snowfall. And I'm looking back to our community going, wow, we actually are pretty spoiled here. Like it, it would, it, that would not fly in our community is basically what I was getting at. And, and the other community, um, the, the main street was quite, quite like their main street is in the disrepair that our side streets are in. I don't think our main streets no. in, bad you're talking about the side streets. Well, their main street looks like our side street. So again, I have to say kudos to council's previous and, and uh, public works and stuff like that for keeping this community uh, in as good a shape as it is. I don't think we often get that much credit for things that go on and uh, when you start looking at surrounding areas, we're actually doing not too shabby, I don't think so. It was just something I had noticed and uh, thought I'd make a point of bringing that up since you led into that, so, yeah. Good. Councilor Medwood. Uh, just to speak a little more of the services to seniors, they offer meal programs at Heritage and Westside Lodge. They've had some change in the residents there, and they are looking to try actually offering or opening their lunch meal program to the general public. So if you're interested in a home-cooked meal in a dining room setting or to take out, um, they offer them at both Heritage and Westside Lodge. Uh, you have to, you would have to call the services of seniors office to kind of make a reservation, choose your location, and it's basically ten dollars for a home cooked meal. And you can take your friends or family if you would like. Um, it's just a way to serve the community. And some of the newer residents, they are a bit, I guess, younger in age, so they're still cooking for themselves and whatnot, so they're maybe not as dependent or reliant on the program. So just to kind of make sure we can keep them up and operational, uh, it's something that's going to be offered. And they'll be, if you see little posters in the community, they're going to be going up just to let people know. So if you want to take your mom or your grandma or somebody and just have a nice home cooked meal, that'll be another option soon. That's a good idea. Will we put that on Facebook? Um, I probably could snap a picture of it and do that. Okay, great, because we could be, a handful of us could it can go to thousands. Council <laughs> White. Yeah, uh, Your Worship, uh, yourself and myself and others had uh, an impromptu meeting with Mayor Boziak and one or two of his councillors uh, at AMN. And uh, we've talked about it a couple times before, but I'm going to make a point of trying to make that happen after the fish dinner. And we're going to meet in Ethelbert or Pine River was a suggestion. We get together with his council and our council, and some of the things that popped up are areas of opportunity, things we're probably not even thinking about that we could do together, RCMP, medical care, and economic development. So uh, Mayor Boziak was quite excited about doing that, as was his council, and your worship, we all agreed on that. So that's something to look for in the future. 
I'd like to compliment uh, Deputy Mayor Morial because he spotted uh, in one of some brochures somewhere that the North has a mobile MRI and the descriptor of the North being given out by some health department, Swan River was there. So thank you, uh, Councillor Deputy Mayor Morial. He uh, arranged to have a chat with uh, Lynette Saragusa, the CEO of Shared Health at the AMM, another reason we go to those things. And uh, she's going to be looking into that, and I believe you and she will be following up. If we, it's, it's an itinerant MRI, it's in a van. So it could come here one week, a month, one week, every two months, whatever. So that has potential for us. So uh, we've got a couple of good friends there. I think Rafiq and Danny, Dr. And Danny is on Shared Health as a, as a Chief Medical Officer. And uh, Adrian Fung is also a Chief Executive Officer. Both trained here, both went through this medical service team. And they like us, as, as most of the province does. Uh, the question relative to Swan Valley Sport Fishing and uh, uh, Zebra Mussels, uh, our, our staff, Brock and Holly, regularly set traps for lack of a better, I think it's just a sheet of metal under a pier, and the Zebra Mussels like those, and they'll settle on those. And we've been doing it now for two or three years in various lakes in the Duck Mountains. They actually found some uh, environmental DNA, whatever that means. I have a bit of a bowel tobacco, I, I still need help with it. In Singush, and that lake was shut down for three years. Nobody went in and out. You went out of that lake, you stayed on that lake. The cottage owners stayed there. So I think they've been given a green light now. So sport fish, uh, one of the things you may not be aware of, works so well with your, your people at the watershed. Just uh, so appreciative. I think our budget is two, three hundred thousand dollars that goes into the community. We hire people. So it's, it's awesome. It's so hopefully the mayor will give me heck. Our dinner is on May the 4th. We'll have uh, roughly three to four hundred people there attending the dinner. The money stays here, it helps our economy, it, it helps our resource, so uh, uh, we're excited about that. So if you want tickets, I've got them. Thank you. Well, why would I give you a heck? This is the time for you to do your public announcements, so you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Powell. Um, just a couple things. Just uh, one, uh, Swan Valley Legacy Committee is meeting with Council tomorrow night. We're meeting at the Elder Shark and Friendship Center, so that is happening. Um, another thing that is, um, happening um, probably with, with the Albert Short Term Friendship Center is that, um, and I've had quite a few questions regarding it, is that um, we no longer, we will no longer be managing 300 units for from Manitoba Housing. Um, they, they will be running those properties themselves and we will still manage um, through Manitoba Housing 88 units, which will include our Sunset Building and some senior properties along the backside. Um, so yeah, so that's been a, a lot of questions, but um, Manitoba Housing is moving, will be moving back into Swan River with the and, and managing those properties, those 300 properties for themselves. Um, another, just kind of, just a kudos to the garbage dump. I, I don't go to the garbage dump very often, but I actually had to take some garbage there and throw to the dump and drove through the dump and was like, wow, this is like a little maze. And, and everything was like, where you dump things? I was like, wow. And Dave thought I was crazy because <laughs> he goes to the dump. I don't go to the dump. And I was like, wow, you go over here for this? And it was just kudos to the, the garbage and everybody and over there because it was really good to see. The contractors do a good job. Yeah. yeah. Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, just one thing. Uh, as we all know, today is Federal Budget Day. Uh, so just a quick scanning through some of the releases there. Unfortunately, nothing's jumped out that would affect the municipality directly um, for it. But I will leave it, uh, hopefully, to our AMM uh, bean counters and <coughs> analytics there that will dissect that there and provide us a nice uh, uh, bulletin on the pros and cons of what it is there. But unfortunately, um, some of the hopes that AMM and FCM we're putting forward has not come unless it's buried in the background but just in the, the quick bulletins um, with their 39.8 billion dollar projected deficit um, there's been no increases um, or programs announced specifically towards uh, any type of financial relief towards municipalities so we continue that saga that's all I got that rolled off your tongue like the, 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 the government would let it roll off their tongue. We're getting pretty good at it. Love you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I don't really have much more to offer than what I had said in my original uh, uh, post. So 
I do want to, although I do want to say maybe I, that uh, Councillor White and uh, Victor Memorial and the whole recruitment team for medical services has grown in a lot in this term much as a, as a better working group than we've ever seen it before as far as with all our municipal uh, partners on board and working together and um, you know I, I know that the presentation that Jenny had there at the AMM was really powerful but it just goes to show that what we have really counts and, and, and she said, you know, when she came, you know, that she didn't re really expect to see what she did see here, but we have the things that people need, you know, the recreational services that we often, you know, you know, fight about and say, hey, we don't need that or you don't need this. And, and, and she was a testament of that. So she did a really good job. And I think some of that video has been posted, you know, along the way. And I think we'll probably see it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a good, you know, moment for Swan River, and, and I think the Swan Valley, because I spoke with the two Reeves that joined with us, and they're pretty proud of it too. So, because no matter what, you know, the valley is, you know, Swan River, and, and it's, you know, all the municipalities, but we have to share in that, you know, sunshine together. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, anything from you? Uh, no, uh, I guess to, to add on to your to your speech, your worship, would maybe some recognition to the to the founding players of the medical services committee, Glenn McKenzie, Jason Scholes. Thanks to them too. Absolutely, quite a team. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, yeah, we're just keeping an eye on the river, uh, as I mentioned earlier. But it looks like it's not too bad a shape, so we'll continue to monitor. As it looks like we're going to get precipitation all through this week, and there's a uh, gauge board at the CN rail and a gauge board at uh, Cotton's Bridge. So our safety officer has been checking those and is in constant contact with me and we'll regard that. Okay, thank you, uh, Director Clausen. Ah, uh, too much for me there. Um, we're winding down our our arena season. We have two and a half weeks left and our ice comes out and you know, just, just happy to see everybody in the rink this year and that's it for winter, I guess. Well, good for you. I mean, your uh, inaugural uh, uh, <laughs> season. Made whole winter season. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> good job. CFO Ganita. <laughs> All right. All right, with that then, we... Uh, Resolved that this regular meeting of council be adjourned at 8.27 p.m. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.